Call of Duty games have become part of the console furniture. Every Christmas period rolls around and like slipping on a pair of comfy slippers, it always feels instantly familiar. You know the drill by now and you don't need me to repeat it for at least the tenth time myself on this channel alone. In the here and now, it's also becoming standard that the alpha public release on PlayStation owners first get to strap on some army fatigues early and go head to head with some vocal 10 year olds and likely lose more often than not. COD is COD, and a new gen has not really changed much other than the year on year progression of one of the few franchises that focus on low input and frame times whilst pushing equally as hard in delivering that with high technology. Michael Drobot, one of the lead rendering engineers on the title, has pushed the engine which dates right back to the Quake 3 Arena id Tech 3 Origins and delivers the same frugal yet fulfilled frame delivery as id Tech or DICE. Great company, no doubt. Being a cross-gen release though, just like Ghost last time, we forgo AI fish for Ray Trace Shadows and more for our delicious next-gen treats. But not today though. Confined to those filthy current-gen platforms, we have to do with Commodore Garden Shadow Maps and SSR for now. I know, I know, but bear with me. It, I'm sure it'll get better later. And like previous entries I've covered it, it should not shock that resolution and image is sacrificed over the norm to achieve these 16 millisecond frame times and 60 something millisecond input times. Still the best in the business. Now this means the horizontal resolution axis on PS4 comes in at 1280 with a reconstruction method to bring that back up by a further 50% on top of that to 1920 by 1080. The vertical axis appears to remain locked in my counts to 1080p, but it may also dip in extreme cases. I'd just never caught any. Now, a couple of the real-time cinematics at the start can drop down to 960, and that's what I suspected when I looked at it yesterday. So this means that it can go down to 960 again, which is a quarter resolution of the width. And that's kind of where it seems to sit most of the time. Then it dynamically scales between those levels and reconstructs the missing gaps. Now the vertical axis appears to remain at 1080p at all times. It might also be dynamic, I just never caught when it was, but I tend to incline that it's not dynamic and that stays static and it just uses the width as the dynamic scaling and then that fixed level of interlaced reconstruction. Contesting hard point. Secure. Enemy took Foxtrot. Now the same method on the Pro is also used, with the best count seeing a 66% increase at 1920 by 1800 on the current PlayStation Best over its older Bro, but at worst this can be 25% higher with a quarter 960 by 1800 native front buffer that can leave obvious interlace like traces in action. Now the Alpha here seems to exhibit a bug that can cause a reconstruction to fail even when still, and it stays like that, but in motion, alongside the game's exquisite velocity based radial and camera and per object blur, it looks much cleaner and clearer over the base model. As such, I expect this to be the same on PS4, but the method does not break or is as often doesn't stand out. And maybe it's also aimed to deliver 1600 width via the previous frame, making two frames to fit the hit at 3200 by 1800 pixel count. Either way, the image is sharper, but it suffers from more obvious shimmer and breakup due to that low almost interlaced pixel width image, which is reminiscent of Killzone Shadowfall. Now, it can come out with pixel counts hitting a full 3840 by 2160, but I think that's the reconstruction bringing that pixel count back up. So actually, I think it just targets 3200 by 1800 and then it dynamically scales the width, and then the reconstruction fills in the gaps or brings it back up to a full 3840 by 2160. But it's very rare you'll get a count of that level. Now this is an alpha and it's definitely one of the areas they'll be working to improve so this may possibly be much better in the final release in the coming months. Now another area both versions exhibit is it can get softer at times at certain points and you would suggest that this was a dynamic resolution but Modern Warfare like the previous titles right back for Call of Duty World War 2 it used a variable rate shading solution VRS in software and this means that it takes the image quality itself the overall image it breaks it down to quads or grid and then the expensive shading element is done at a lower resolution and blended and merged together within the pipeline and then the post effects on top to increase the quality and hide the fact that it's all done at a lower level now it was designed only be built around um, alpha effects to start off with 
it moved over that in Modern Warfare last year to use it for the entire screen. So it used it on smoke, geometry, trees, long views. So you see a lot of this during the title. And this game will most likely use that as well. So it's using a tier one level, but actually better than that hardware based solution by using software. And this is why software is always the best way. Give programmers hardware that they can program and they'll make many solutions. Fixed function hardware is excellent for one purpose, but once you break beyond that, it fixes you down a certain path. So having a VRSS software solution here does show that you can use it. And actually, in the um, the presentation that they did earlier this year, they also mentioned the fact that both consoles are pushing forward with VRSS as hardware solutions. So we are going to see this more and more often in titles, and already COD is adopting it as a software solution, so they're going to try and push this harder on the next generation. So I wouldn't be surprised if this already uses the hardware-based functionality on both the Series X, the Series S, and the PS5, um, and obviously anything that's got an RTX card or the forthcoming RDNA cards on PC will all be using VRS to push this forward. So it'll be good to see just how all those versions pair out and how that image quality is being used. But the downside is occasions you can see softer areas of this breakup and pixelation at certain elements of textures. But aside this, both models support SSR reflections, wide open areas to battle, high quality PBR materials, excellent use of lighting, spot and area lights, and directional, along with some of the best and most consistent shadow maps in 60fps games. These are delivered with a three tier cascade, and it seems to filter and increase the Atlas resolution, which does stand out on long reviews, and then close up the character shadows look great. Filtering is better on pro over base, with an isotropic filtering looking around four times over two times on the standard console but again this is an alpha and bugs also appear here with it sometimes reverting to trilinear at times but this can come and go it may be another dynamic element to save on those vital milliseconds for performance which is engaging incorrectly here but the odd chance it does it does stand out if you're looking but it, again it's a fast-paced twitch based shooter so you shouldn't really be standing around looking at the floor and a lot of these footage you see here i'm doing that that's why i die a lot because people keep killing me whilst i'm trying to admire the beauty the other area that stands out as well is the motion vectors on the excellent water as these are fully dynamic vertices based geometry that ebb bobs and flows it can jut it into a blur on various surface vectors causing an odd motion blur when it looks inconsistent within the triangle again it's all obvious bugs the team will know of and attempt to remedy by launch so what about performance then? Well, the base PS4 is up first, and unsurprisingly, it doesn't hold onto that locked 60 FPS at these early points. It uses an adaptive V-Sync at the top section, top third, top quarter um, of the screen, which means it can tear. It tears often on the PS4, and then on top of that, it actually, when it goes over budget, it just drops into the next refresh cycle of 33 milliseconds. So you see regular dips into the mid 40s. Can go low 40s and that's not seen it go any lower than that but that just all depends on the action but it's in all the obvious areas alpha draw overdraw and triangle count fill rate all those areas are causing dips and judders into that refresh cycle but it keeps it as close as can to 33 milliseconds it never goes at any more than the next refresh rate of 16 milliseconds so it never breaks above 33 milliseconds as a frame time so it still feels fast still feels smooth but you can definitely feel the judder the slowness the lack of response at times when you're playing the title it plays much better in the smaller sections the the mosh pit type areas but some of these grander sections it's not got war zone that's not open at this point so some of the grander areas certainly the marine battle on the navy with the water that really stresses that's the biggest impact on the title it can it regularly hovers into the, the 40s at that point and that's where you feel it the most other sections can be quieter but when you get in vehicles tanks specifically blow stuff up shootout buildings lots of alpha again you can see the low quality vrs on those alpha effects as well all of that area really fills the screen hammers the gpu and it puts stress on the whole throughput and that causes these dips and it can regularly just hover into those 33 milliseconds for long enough that it can almost feel like a 30 fps title at times it's never bad and like i say it's an early alpha it's not even in beta yet so this much more improvements to come. They regularly push it out of the park and deliver a solid performing title. There was some exceptions in the previous generation, but I'm looking forward to maybe the mining this out, improving their implementation of VRS, improving that dynamic scaling, and just reducing those areas of overdraw and triangle counts in the multiplayer areas, which are really hitting the GPU hard. There might be some CPU areas as well, but 
the fact that it's just dropping into the next refresh cycle seems that I think it's all GPU related, bandwidth related. There's no serious CPU issues here, but obviously the team would know better. I'm completely out of the picture. And obviously moving into the PS4 Pro, this is very similar. It is better, it is more consistent, it doesn't tear anywhere near as often, but it does still dip, it can still dip into the same 40s at points. Again, all the same areas that affect the PS4 Pro, probably the PS4 affect the Pro as well, so heavy alpha overdraw, heavy effects, lots of triangle count, geometry draw. It can be triangle bound, um, alpha bound, it can be bandwidth bound, all of those areas, and again, it's all fully GPU related. Tearing happens at the top section again, but it can dip into the next refresh cycle. But all of the, get the versions here all hover at that 33 milliseconds as a worst frame rate point, which is still very good, but obviously COD is all about that fast refresh rate of 16 milliseconds. So at this early point, we've got a good look at it. There's certainly area for improvement. The team will know this and they'll work on this to try and refine it a little better, get the quality of the performance up slightly higher, closer to that, holding on to that 16 milliseconds more often and hopefully refine that, in, that image reconstruction method they've got going on here to just eke out those areas of that PS4 Pro where you can just see the, the, the narrow width. That said, um, their priority should always be around performance, and they know this, so I, I think it already looks good enough, clean enough, sharp enough, fun enough for it to be playable as it is right now. If their priority comes around improving the quality of the visuals and improving the performance, it's performance all day, every day, every single time. So if that's where their target needs to lie, that's what they should do. Right now, it's still a cracking looking game. It, it's never a bad looking game. COD games never are bad looking. They pack in the whole gamut of effects, great alpha effects, particle effects, explosions, beautiful smooth movement and long draw distance, and some excellent artistic drive and hand placed lighting. You can see here as you go down the GI bounce of the caves, that soft diffuse uh, sandy areas and the light bouncing up. It all looks very good. There's nothing bad here, like I say, but it doesn't stand out. It's not a generation defining title. It's just more of the same, consistent and refined. The water areas are good. The, the actual geometry based water, I like that. The fluid, the simulation, the fact you can swim in and out and the screen space reflections, all of that is pretty good and consistent. But overall, it's more of the same. The quality is great. The performance is okay. It can be better and it will be better. And I'll be looking forward to checking out more, certainly on the single player, as that's always the most impressive part from a technical aspect and more on the Xbox and PC versions once we can. Anyway, that's it for you guys and girls. This is obviously is a, a quick look at the title, but if you do like this or anything else I put together, obviously you can like, share and subscribe because I'm completely self-funded and independent and I can't stress enough how much it all helps. I'll see you on the next one. Taking Fuck. Oh.